You're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Lindy, your host. Today we have a full half an hour edition of Greater Brockton, and what we are going to talk about is the Food and Drug Administration, otherwise known as the FDA. And I've had Joe on before. Joe, I still can't pronounce your last name, so you got to do it for me. <laughs> Rolanitis, Mark. <laughs> Rolanitis, okay. Now, is that, is that Lithuanian, by the way? It is. You're, you're right on. Yeah. Well, the reason I know that is Brockton, we were just talking about it off camera, um, part of the diversity of Brockton is Brockton had one of the largest Lithuanian communities in the state. I didn't know it. Years and years ago. Good and there's thing. still a lot of really... Um, great diehards that still are in the city, the church clothes that they all belong to, so they go over to the next town in Avon. There you go. And I know folks with Drzinskis and <laughs> uh, I can't pronounce all the names. Uh, uh, Pribyshauskis, it took me a long time to get that one. I feel right at home. David Crosby, who was our mayor years ago in the 70s, he was Lithuanian. Okay. So uh, Brockton has a proud tradition with okay. Lithuanian. I'm comfortable so here. So there you go, you feel comfortable. <laughs> Among so friends. You and I know that the United States Food and Drug Administration, or FDA, is a government agency, but most people don't know about it unless it's in the news. Right, yeah, you see those, those three letters, the, the FDA out there, and, and people shake their head or, or smile or, or whatever. Right, so who, why, and what? How's well, that? We'll do the who, what, not the who, what, when, where, why, and right. how, but the who, what, and why. What's the mission of the Food and Drug Administration? Well, we're, we're a scientifically based regulatory agency market, which means we use science to, uh, to enforce the laws that are on the books that we are to enforce. Uh, we go back to 1906 uh, when Teddy Roosevelt signed the Food and Drug Act back then, which is 106 years ago now, mm -hmm. uh, 109 years ago, whatever. Um, so we, uh, we have a, a big consumer protection uh, um, footprint. And, and everybody here in the city of Brockton is impacted by the FDA. They may not know it, they may not want to know it, but we take care of their food, mm -hmm. we take care of their, their medicine, all their drugs, uh, we take care of the medical devices that people here in the city use, um, cosmetics, you know, your toothpaste. I think it's like 20 cents out of every dollar spent here in the city is on something the FDA regulates. We've got a real big regulatory footprint, so we want to protect your viewers, you know, our consumers out here in the city. It's really important, and we've been doing that for a long time. Uh, we enforce a series of laws and regulations, and you've probably heard the Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act, you know, drop mm -hmm. down every now and then, and the Nutrition Labeling Act back in the 1990s, which changed labeling on all our foods uh, dramatically for the better, really. So we have um, have a real big mission here in the city and throughout the country. There are about 13,000 people that work for the FDA. Some down in the Gaithersburg, uh, Bethesda, White Oak area uh, in Virginia, in Maryland, in Washington, the rest like myself out here in the field. Um, you know, in my case, getting the message out in, in the case of a uh, consumer safety officer doing the inspections at regulated industries, you know, the, the food manufacturers, the drug manufacturers, device manufacturers, even your blood banks, uh, we are out there inspecting. So we've got, got a real big mission huge mission. We've been doing it for a long time. Are we perfect? No. Do we, do we put our heart and soul in being perfect? Yeah, we really do. We take it real seriously. Uh, we're not uh, in... Um we're not in cahoots with regulated industry. In fact, a lot of folks in certain industries either fear us or don't like us. Um, they have to put up with us because we are the feds. Um, uh, so we, uh, we take it seriously. So, um, you know, like I said, usually you hear FDA when something's gone wrong <laughs> right. or something is uh, out of place That's like correct. like there might be a drug and drugs go through rigorous testing and they have to go through all sorts of approvals sure. and everything like that um there were certain things that aren't regulated like uh i well you tell me maybe i got it wrong maybe i don't have the right understanding but like your your natural food centers there are a lot of I, I, I'm going to call them substances. People think of other things when you say dietary word substance, supplements. For but example. dietary right. supplements. Now, if you look at some of them, or even if you see some of the commercials on TV, it says it's not FDA approved. Right. It, it, so you got to watch out for that kind well, of stuff. Well, you do. Um, but there's a, when you look at the dietary supplement industry, and that's a huge industry. You, know, you go back 15 or so years, and the amount of supplements on shelves in grocery stores or markets were very small. Nowadays you, have to, days you have to take a taxi to get through all of them because dietary supplements have really become big business. Uh, and the agency has a regulatory impact on labeling mm -hmm. um, and, and various parts uh, uh, of, the, of the dietary supplement 
industry. The bottom line here is that we regulate supplements as foods, mm -hmm. so they fall under the food regulations uh, and so forth. Uh, big part of the industry, um, they're not drugs, for example, they can't make drug claims unless they, they go through a certain process. Um, so we take that burgeoning and popular industry very, you know, it's, it's very important that it's, it's a safe product for, you know, the people here in Brockton or anywhere else in Massachusetts or New England to be involved with and use. And, and dietary supplements are here to stay. And you have things like shakes and powders and all of that it's stuff. It's a lot, and, yeah. And it's a lot. I, I, have, I have students in my class. One day I'll get them to do a speech on the FDA. Okay. And I'll tell them they can contact you and sure. get all the information. Oh, yeah. Because a lot of it nowadays, um, you, you just told me you came in with a lot of paperwork, <laughs> okay? Do. Because you've been doing yeah. it for a while. But the, the latest rage for everybody is website. You have a website. We do, the yeah. federal government has a website. Yeah. So what is FDA's? Uh, www.fda.gov. FDA.gov, yeah. yeah. which and, is easy. Yeah. And back, it's a pretty, um, I've heard mixed uh, feedback on it. I Because I use it often, I'm pretty comfortable with it. But you do a backslash and you can search everything from generic drugs to dietary supplements to childhood obesity. And you'll get all, your students will get all the information they need, need to to really make a uh, you know, or report, a report, inf you know, informational and, and I think uh, concrete, you might say. I mean, if my, pa my parents are in their 80s and if they were surfing the web, which my dad does for a blog, but you not, not a lot, you can find out a, an awful lot on the internet. I, they used to buy like all the prescription books and the, oh, sure. the PDRs and all of that crazy stuff. Um, now, you were talking about the claims, okay? Different, different government agency that deals with False claim, like if FTC, if the claims are false, they're regulatory as well. Correct? Over, over the airways, yeah. Over the, the airways. There, there's, there's a whole host of alphabet soup of regulatory agencies, and we all have a strict area in the Code of Federal Reg Regulations, the CFRs, that we enforce, and and that's our turf, you might say. Sometimes you you sort of cross over to other agencies, regulatory turf, and they don't like that. They don't want you to do that, and there's always a debate about it. For example, the you know, Department of Agriculture uh, handles your, your, your red meat, so you know, the FDA doesn't go there. Right. Um, so we all have our areas of enforcement, and we train our, our consumer safety officers, our investigators, uh, in the Code of Federal Regulations. We've enforced the laws that we enforce, and we have a lot of industry here in Massachusetts, I'm sure right down here in Brockton as well, where we do uh, investigations and inspections. We like these regulated industries, Mark, to be in what we call voluntary compliance. Basically, we want them to know what the laws are. They have questions they can ask us before we arrive to inspect them, and we want them to follow the laws. You know, the real bottom line is, as I mentioned earlier, is consumer protection. Your audience needs to be safeguarded in, in the foods that they eat, in the medications they use, in, in the blood banks that they use, cosmetics, um, you know, everything that's out there that's under the FDA's purview of regulatory protection, your viewers need to feel comfortable with. Does it always work? Are there, you mentioned recalls a moment ago. There are always recalls. The first thing I do in the morning when I go to my office, I you know, turn the computer on, put in my, the, my PIV identification card, and you see a list of recalls. Mm -hmm. And you know, for the average layman, that could scare them. But recalls are part of regulated industry. It's like bringing back a pair of socks to Walmart. Something doesn't work. We don't like it if it's if it's if it's not made well. You bring it back. Recalls uh, in here in in our regulatory area are just where products just are not measuring up. Something's gone wrong. Labeling issue, maybe a a, a, a purity issue, uh, you know, some type of problem with with the product is brought off the market. So recalls are real common. Like one of the things that was in the news, it's been in the news a couple of times, is like the prepared salads that are in the bag right. with listeria. It was, yeah, I remember okay. that, yeah. Now, that's a food. It is, that's Does us. Does your agent, you, you get involved Big with that. time, oh yes, that's us, okay. fully us, yeah. Um, if, you, if you come up with, um, if you come up with sick consumers, and we lose about 3,000 consumers every year in this country due to major food, foodborne outbreaks, food poisoning, uh, not to mention thousands of others who are hospitalized. Uh, the bagged salad issue every now and then uh, could be any of a number of things, uh, you know, improper um, 
safeguarding of, of the produce, improper cleaning, uh, violations in packaging that cause listeria to develop. That's a very uh, vigorous and, and, and virulent bacteria. Uh, so it's something that we watch and we inspect for um, under regulations uh, and, and rules and such. The industry really polices itself, or it's supposed to police itself, but of course the FDA is, is the oversight in, in that equation. What are the big issues, major concerns of the FDA right now at this time, or the big issues the agency is dealing with? What's the How many hours do we have? <laughs> uh, we're going to do a half an hour. Normally I do this for nine or 18 minutes, but because it's an important issue sure. and you're protecting everybody, we figured we'd give it a little bit of extra air time. I so do appreciate that. I, I, I don't want you to tell me all of them, but the big <laughs> ones. How about the big ones? Well, it's, you know, food safety, as you mentioned earlier, and, and, and you really do, I know you do your homework because I've worked with you before. Yeah, food safety is always a concern. Mm -hmm. uh, without safe food, we're a third world nation. We really are. Safe food gives us a lot of leeway to pursue media outreach, for example, getting a message out, art, you know, enjoying life and being comfortable without searching for a good food supply. So food safety is always a major concern. And with that, I think it's one of the topics I mentioned is obesity, mm -hmm. especially childhood obesity. Uh, no pun, in and pun intended, it's a big concern. It really is. Um, we have our seasonal things like, you know, proper barbecuing, once again, food safety. Uh, drug development, you know, your clinical trials are always uh, always a big concern. The wonderful thing about the drug industry, uh, and that stretches from, you know, middle of the Maine all the way down to North Carolina, which is a huge corridor of drug production, is that they know the laws, they're very sophisticated, and they adhere to them for the most part. So the drug industry, uh, is, is doing quite well. Uh, you know, uh, flus and pandemics. We just left the flu season. Uh, we're always concerned about pandemics breaking up. That's an unidentified, uh, you know, uh, virus that pops up and, and, you, and you don't have a, a profile or, or a picture of it in, in all the medical banks. And, and uh, that's always a major concern. Terrorism, you might not think that would be a concern, but uh, 10 or so years ago, many of the industries that the FDA regulated, Mark, were what we consider it to be soft targets. Your food production companies were not well protected. They weren't screening their employees very well. They didn't have the proper security in place. And you know what? It would have been really easy for the terrorists to have struck hard and fast at our food supply. Talk about a dramatic panic among the population mm. because, you know, you've got to have good food. Without mm. it, things are off. Wow. Now, you said pandemics. I don't think this is classified as one, but let me just maybe stretch it a little bit. We're hearing a lot about Zika. That's right. more CDC when you're talking your alphabet soup. Right. But that, that is a, a, a health it's, health. it's a health, health, health concern. Um, there, there are memorandums, there are releases out there wanting the general public. Uh, distribution of information, CDC is part of Health and Human Services, which is where FDA sits in the cabinet post. It's, it's FDA, CDC, NIH, and maybe one or two other mm -hmm. agencies um, in, in HHS. Uh, yeah, we're sharing information. We're looking at it. Uh, we're, we're trying to keep the general public aware of what to do, where not to go, and how to protect themselves. It's always a, it's always a distribution of accurate information, staying away from editorial and sensationalizing, looking at these issues from a scientific point of view and trying real hard to get that information out to the general population. That's why coming on your program is such a great thing for us. We really enjoy that. Is it uh, difficult when you end up with diversity? And in Brockton here, we have one of the largest Cape Verdean Creole populations, Correct. Haitian Creole populations. Um, you definitely have a radio voice and you've been doing this a, a while, but you, like me, probably don't speak other languages, maybe, maybe the Lithuanian. Uh, very little. Okay, but how do you get the word out to um, people that come from other countries? That is a they great question. They come here, and um, I know the city is doing a lot with outreach to try to reach different populations, sure. but what is, what is your agency? That, that's a great question, and I, you know, I've been doing this for a long time, and mm -hmm. I've never really gotten that one before. Uh, so I'm going to think about that for just okay. a microsecond. Well, we, we have um, we have a lot of diversity among the 13,000 people that work for the agency. Uh, one of our uh, 
public affairs officers uh, who just retired about eight months ago, Laurel Yu, was Asian, Asian American, mm -hmm. so Chinese. So she she got a lot of things out in in Mandarin mm -hmm. and, and and Taiwanese and such, and and really was an advocate for getting uh, information out in in the the Asian uh, language, as you might say. We have diversity in our staff, so we produce, and I, I wish I'd brought some with me. We produce numerous different handouts, and we're real big on that uh, in different languages. And I think Cape Verdean may very well be one of them. It's very okay. very interesting. So we. We try to address, you know, Spanish, you know, Portuguese, you know, your French, your German, uh, your Asian, your Asian languages, and 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 various other uh, not so popular languages in our distribution chain. So we're we're really aware of that. Do we cover them all? No, we don't. Um, do we have translators oftentimes that go out and, and talk to like the Cambodian community? We do, and and we we and we hire translators when we need to do that. Uh, so um, yeah, we're we're very sensitive to the great diversity that makes this country how, as wonderful as it is. We might be able to help you too because we do have programs in other languages. Maybe I can get you placed on some of those and, and nice. bring somebody with you. Or, or nice. um, one of the programs is hosted by a gentleman who used to be the head of interpreter services for uh, Brockton Hospital. Oh, that's so good. he might actually be able to take what you say and translate it and oh, it, it'll nice. help because yeah. um, we just opened down the street here a wonderful um, Store Vincente supermarket, uh, families Cape Verdean. They went from one store to two stores. Good. I got to tell you something. It's the nicest, cleanest facility I've seen yeah. in a long time. Brand new. I'll bring make a new. It's an old supermarket that have been closed for 20 years. There's wow. no A and B and a star, and they reopened it, and it's it's beautiful. My staff goes there and eats the prepared foods all the time <laughs> when you get a chance. Good for them. Um, now, would you would the FDA be involved in something like? We, we had, uh, I don't know, it's probably close to two years at this point, something to do with, in terms of the, the drug industry and the pharmaceutical, that whole compounding issue that, that came up. Is that, is that your agency or is that a different agency? Uh, state and federal over, oversight, um, basically, um, basically state. Uh, mm -hmm. we, we've, okay. we've had some interesting compounding incidents in the past couple years, as you know. Um, we inspect these facilities, as does the state. Compounding is interesting um, because you can actually create new drugs right. without the clinical trials required mm -hmm. of your traditional drugs. Um, it's usually for a one-to-one -one application. It's, it's a it's, I don't know, design or medication, I guess, for want of a yeah. better term. But we have oversight there, uh, jurisdiction. Um, once again, it's important when you go to creating individual medications that you do it right, that you have the, you know, the proper um, production or proper uh, sanitation, yeah, sanitation <laughs> development, um, understand the, uh, you know, the distribution of the product in the bloodstream. Uh, you know, proper levels of, of active ingredients as opposed to non-active ingredients. It's very complex, and but very old, very traditional. It goes way, way back. Um, yes, yeah, so we have oversight as, as to state agencies, um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's a really important to know about it. And everybody talks to each other. You mentioned the alphabet soup of different <laughs> agencies, but state and federal need to work together to oh, protect do. everybody. They, and, and local too. Yeah, right. they you do. The Board to Health and, and Brockton and things yeah. like that. Now, you mentioned before a little, <coughs> a little earlier about the childhood obesity. I hadn't quite thought of that in the context of the FDA. So how extensive is that in America or even here in Brockton? I mean, I, I, you see reports on it all the time on you TV. You do, yeah, nicely put, and, and something I'm glad you brought up. Um, it's a big concern, um, and it's, you know, I'm a, I'm a great great guy for numbers, Mark, but about 17% of our, of, our, of our children between the ages of three and 19 are obese, and that's, that goes you know, above just being overweight, but they're obese, their body mass index is such, you know, weight and height. Uh, that's about 13 million young people. With the, and, and I'm sure here in the city, there are a lot of overweight young people and, and obese young people. It's just a condition that we are confronting in this country. Between 2011 and 2014, we saw that population surge to the 17% that I just mentioned. It's holding steady, I must admit. 
and I'll get stats later on, but right now it's holding steady. What comes with childhood obesity? It was lack, lack of self-esteem, there's no mm -hmm. doubt about it. Uh, future coronary problems, bone density issues, uh, cardiovascular problems, diabetes, you know, type two diabetes comes with that. So the quality of life for young people who I think about one-fifth of the young young people, I'm sure the stats are right across the board here in, in Brock, did one-fifth of the young people entering school, Mark, are obese. This is too much screen time. This is not enough time uh, among parents and kids learning to read labels, understanding good nutrition, good diets, and getting out and playing like kids used to. And shit, you and I, we were in that generation the, 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 that got the, the, out there. The red, do the red dodgeball is an endangered species Oh, it now, is. Okay? I remember that. And you're right. I mean, the, 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 the screens, but everything with the obesity and the diabetes you're talking about, it's all about the sugar. A lot of it is sugar. Yeah, salt, uh, salt. I yeah. am. I'm type two. I kind of did it to myself. No family history. I'm trying to be careful, but Good man. I have an Italian wife who makes pasta, and I like white pasta. You do, rice. <laughs> okay, I am. But um, I go to a, I go out to eat, and there is one choice of diet soda. It's Diet Coke or Diet Pepsi. Right. There's nothing else. Okay. And you go to Dunkin' Donuts. Now you shouldn't go to Dunkin' Donuts at all. But when you go there and you look at the drinks, there's no diet. You get you can get a water, or you might have one diet drink. They pump everything with sugar. They Donuts do. are oh. lethal weapons sure. in, in a yeah, sense. And I might eat a donut once a year. I love donuts. I love bagels. But everything's bigger too, it Joe. Is. Yeah, we've supersized. The sizes of food back when I was a kid, and you know I'll be 55 this summer, but it. They were smaller. Bagels were smaller. That's true. Donuts that's true. were smaller. Yeah, Everything's bigger. And then, of course, you can supersize me. There's a whole documentary on that. So what is the federal government's role in dealing with the issue? Because when you talk about the increased cardiovascular problems and the med that, that drives up the medical costs, which What's the biggest part of the federal budget and the state budget? It's 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 health insurance. Exactly. Yeah, you, you you've got the entire equation right down there for us, real easy. You're right. I mean, we're all paying for people who are suffering from obesity, and we'll keep paying as long as they keep you know being obese. Uh, federal government, um, we have programs like the Spot the Block program, where we try to educate parents and health care givers in schools in teaching young people you know, from like, you know, six to 18, how to read and understand your nutrition labeling. Your, your label on your foods is really good and it's really accurate. We, we talk to them about contents, about cutting down on sodium, which you just mentioned, cutting down on sugars, you know, understanding your caloric needs and intake and your carbohydrates and so forth, what not to eat, what to eat, uh, you know, not, not overkill but trying to make young people understand that they have a big role as to their parents, as to their teachers, as does the federal government, state government, in making sure we handle this abundance of food that we get. I mean, it's okay to eat junk food every now and then, but it can't be a steady, it shouldn't be a steady diet. <laughs> I just saw the ultimate junk food. It's Cheetos stuffed with macaroni and cheese inside. I Sounds literally, great. someone just put it up on Facebook. It's like, oh, gee, I want to try it. I'm going to regret if I do, okay? Because the, the, the bad stuff tastes good. Oh, it does. And the good stuff doesn't always taste bad. Correct. But, but you are right about the labeling. Before, I never have read labels more carefully than when I found out that, that I was affected. You okay? have to. Because... Yeah. And, and what you think is healthy isn't necessarily healthy. No. I mean, it's funny when I go to get cereal, and they've made cereal healthier with multigrains and stuff like sure. that. But like uh, a frosted mini wheat might actually have less sugar in it than something like um, there's a, a multigrain cereal that I like. I, I can't remember the exact name. And I went to buy it. I used to eat it all the time because I thought it was healthy. It's worse for me <laughs> than the frosted mini sure. wheats. Okay, so it's it's kind of crazy. But you're reading labels. I'm. I'm trying, Excellent. Uh, and, and my, my wife takes good care of me. I gotta give her more credit than you. myself. <laughs> I'm good. looking at the list, and, and believe it or not, time's going by, but one of the things that you have on here that you gave me, and I didn't even think FDA when it came to, to this subject, is body art and tattooing. Oh, big time. How are you guys involved with that? 
Ah, we're the government. We're everywhere. You're the um, government. Okay. Well, the inks, the devices that are used to apply the tattoos are regulated uh, through the agency and through different state agencies as well. Mm -hmm. So we got to look up for you know contaminated inks and and devices that are not properly cleaned. So we have a lot to do with that. And on the far side of that, Mark, removals of tattoo, laser surgery, and surgical procedures are also handled by the FDA. We we have oversight over the procedures and and the lasers that are used in them. So we sort of have the tattoo industry coming and going. And about 21% of the adults over the age of 18 have tattoos. Mm -hmm. 20, that's a lot of people. But I mean, the good thing, I, or maybe not so much the good thing, I mean, tattoos are interesting art, and they've been around since day one. Mm -hmm. um, but one in eight of those people would like to get those tattoos removed. They, tattoo that, regret. Big time, big okay. time. And if you have a tattoo, folks, um, black inks, the dark inks, the blues and the browns are easier to remove with laser, laser surgery. It's the reds, the yellows, and the greens that are very difficult to remove. It's an expensive proposition. It mm. really is. And scarring is, is, might be part of the equation as well. Something I never knew is um, when I went to get an MRI, I had to fill out paperwork and they asked me if I had a tattoo, which I don't. Okay. And I guess some of the inks are meta, me, uh, yeah. metal based. They'll resonate. Yeah, they and, will. And it'll mess up your MRI. <laughs> that's so correct. That's something yeah. I never knew before in my life. Yeah. Um, it, I mean, you really run the gamut with this oh, agency, let me huge. tell you. And we talked about grilling season. So with grilling season, and they gave me like the five minute sign, so we probably have about three. Beach season, sunscreen. Um, when I was a kid, my mother would slather me up with baby oil and not worry about anything. <laughs> and nowadays, I'm at the 50 sunblock unless I wear a hat and right. hood. And you gotta be, you, you can't be too careful with you know melanoma and skin cancer. Huge. My dad as a child was very exposed and then late in life, he's 89 years old, Good for you. it's caught up with him. I it's it. caught up with okay. him at this point. But what's the common sense approach Common sense under the sun, know your SPFs and how to yeah. use them. Yeah, well, the, our, our skin is our biggest organ. And, and whether it's tattooed or not, it gets abused a lot. Um, yeah, cover yourself. Uh, you know, don't be paranoid. Uh, use uh, at least an SPF 15. It doesn't go, as we both know, it doesn't go beyond uh, 50 anymore. Right. Uh, laws that came out a couple of years ago limited the, uh, the fantasy numbers of 84 out. Mm -hmm. uh, so 50 is great. Uh, you know, use a good skin block, good skin protection, cover yourself up when you when you have to and you need to, reapply sunscreen when you come back out, out of the water, put it on 15 or so minutes before, before. Uh, you know, just watch yourself if you're, you know, like you and I, fair-skinned fellows, um, and, and we suffer the most. Melanomas are no fun. Skin cancer can be extremely dangerous. It's, more, it's much more common than, than I think I ever remember it to be. But there are, there are approaches, you know, good sunscreen use, uh, good awareness, you know, watch out for the, the 10 to 2 time under the sun. Hats are nice, proper eye protection, uh, just common sense stuff that, that you really got to blend into safe days on the beach. And and from where you and I are sitting right now, we're real close to a lot of good beaches. Absolutely. And they're great. They're really great. Um, and they're just it's a fun time. It's a culture out there. You can read, you can eat, you can enjoy yourself, swim, which is wonderful, but you've got to protect yourself. You know, I don't want to make people scared, just want to make them aware. So you got everything under the sun, like you said before, <laughs> we could probably talk for hours and we'll have you back. I hope so. Contact information for yourself, phone number, website, anything you want to give us? Sure, but probably the best number to reach me, and I'm, I'm always available, is uh, area code 508-869-6023. That's 508-869-6023, extension 1101. Leave a message if I'm not there. I love to do talks at senior centers, uh, you, know, uh, you know, education groups, and big in colleges. Um, we just try to get the message out, and you know, we're really happy that you brought us down here to Brockton. We really are. Thanks for coming. Great to lot. see you. We have to come back. Great. Thanks, Joe. Um, you're watching Greater Brockton. Uh, make sure you stay tuned for more events, places, people, and faces right here in the City of Champion, and uh, have a safe summer.